Hello, I'm Jeannie Syriac. I coordinate African American programs for the Historic Preservation Division. And I'm also the staff liaison to the steering committee of the Georgia African American Historic Preservation Network, or GOPN as we like to call it. GOPN is a program of HPD since 2000. And currently our network exceeds over 3,000 people in membership. To become a member of GOPN, you just have to have an expressed interest in historic preservation. Today I'll discuss some of the initiatives we have implemented or supported here in Georgia. One of our best initiatives is our publication called Reflections. Reflections has been in existence for the last nine years and is produced quarterly by African American programs on behalf of the network. We started Reflections essentially to raise awareness of the many contributions of African Americans to the built and cultural landscape here in Georgia. We also do Reflections to present uh, some of the success stories of various African American heritage and preservation initiatives all over the state. And lastly, uh, we do reflections to give models and inspiration to people that are just starting their preservation projects so that they can hear about some of the ones that have been successful. We do reflections online and it is on our website. And in the past, we have uh, actually prepared summaries of reflections that the user can quickly access while online. So you can visit all of our previous 36 issues at our website. Some of the topics that we have discussed this past year in Reflections include a broad range of different types of projects here in Georgia. Most recently, uh, we're extremely proud that two African-American farms, the Charleston Allen Farm in Morgan County and the Garfield Hall Farm in Bullock County, joined a select group of farms all over the state that are centennial farms. This means essentially that they have been owned by the same families for over 100 years. Since this program inception, uh, nine African-American farms have received this distinctive award. And in Reflections, we discuss some of the stories associated with these latest two. We also examined uh, a series of articles this year on African-Americans in healthcare. We first began to uh, trace what healthcare was available during enslavement. Then we explored some of the health care options that occurred during the Jim Crow period in our history, as well on into the 20th century when segregation ended. One example of such an initiative is a sanitarium in Statesboro, Georgia. It was started by a Dr. Van Buren in 1918, and this facility served that community for a number of years. The building that would that the sanitarium uh, occupies still stands. And it was designed by a famous African-American architect named William Rayfield. We also like to discuss community landmark buildings and reflections. And one of our recent uh, additions to the National Register of Historic Places is the Ocklockney Missionary ba Baptist Church in Grady County. This church, along with several other rural churches along Highway 319, were part of the uh, religious experience of many African Americans who were associated with various plantations in the Thomasville area. Oklockney was such an initiative, and this nomination was supported by the current church and listed this past year. Reflections also explores a number of issues with historically black colleges and universities. And we discuss the development of a heritage campus plan for Fort Valley State University. Fort Valley State was founded in 1895 and they have implemented a gorgeous plan to preserve all of the historic buildings on their campus and also to incorporate 
some new historic buildings that have now become 50 years old since the district was listed back in 2000. These are a few examples of the types of topics we cover in Reflections. Gotham also specializes in holding um, important meetings or workshops throughout the state. And this year, uh, Gotham sponsored in partnership with Historic Augusta, a weekend conference designed for local people in Augusta. And it was called This Place Matters, Augusta. We opened the conference uh, by my speaking at Thankful Baptist Church, which is a contributing resource in the local historic district in Augusta. And we also visited numerous uh, African-American historic districts and places over the weekend and informed our audiences of some of the preservation challenges in those districts today. We also focus a lot on community landmark buildings, as I mentioned. And this past year, I had a special uh, opportunity to discuss the AME Church at one of their district conventions. I visited with over 100 people at the AME Church Convention in Columbus, Georgia. And this particular event was held at St. James AME Church. And I discussed in this presentation uh, over 150 churches that are already listed on the National Register and also encourage people who have historic buildings to go through this process. Some of the projects African American Programs is involved in uh, require direct research and survey methods. And in the past year, we have begun a survey of Georgia's equalization schools. These were schools built during segregation as a response to the Brown versus Board of Education decision in 1954. Well, in Georgia, over 500 schools were built for African Americans from about 1954 well into the 60s to test the theory of separate but equal. These schools represented uh, state-of-the-art buildings and they were the first time in our state's history that public funds were used to build schools for African Americans. Well, it is now 2011, and now these buildings built in the early 50s have become historic. So African American programs, we have been surveying the state uh, to find out how many buildings still exist, what the condition of them are, and also to begin to work with alumni organizations that are interested in acquiring them or preserving them or lastly, finding a new community use for them. Two examples of these schools that we have found are the Willow Hill School. It's located in a rural community in Portal, Georgia, in Bullock County. This school started out as a private school. It also received funding in its earlier years from the Julius Rosenwald Fund. And finally, in 1954, the state-of-the-art building was constructed. It served this rural community till well into the 1980s when uh, integration came and the school closed. It stood vacant for a number of years until the alumni had a reunion and decided they wanted to reclaim their building. The alumni, or the Committee of Twelve as they were called, uh, essentially purchased this building for $112,000 at auction a few years ago and now they are developing plans for it to be a heritage center for that community. Another example is the Jasper County Training School in Monticello, Georgia. This school is a whole complex of buildings, including a courtyard, uh, 10 classroom buildings with several wings, a gymnasium, and a, a shop, because it was used for industrial purposes. It too, uh, had a similar fate to Willow Hill when integration came and the school eventually closed. Today, the gymnasium is open to the community, but the rest of the building is looking for a, a new use. And the alumni of Jasper County Training School, they held a reunion last year and I got to speak at their alumni reunion. 
They also are seeking uh, the Board of Education to support their acquisition of the building. Today, one of the wings of the building is occupied by the, by the Board of Education and used for their monthly meetings. I plan to go and support the Jasper County Training School alumni in their efforts to find a new use for this endangered African American resource. African American programs has also been involved in historic schools known as Rosenwald Schools. We are part of a larger initiative called the Rosenwald Initiative Task Force. This was convened by the National Trust for Historic Preservation around 2002. And with the help of the National Trust, we have secured uh, funding and a number of initiatives for Rosenwald Schools that are all over the South. Here in Georgia, this past year, the Lowe's Charitable and Educational Foundation awarded a small school in Southern Brooks County called the Barney Colored School, a grant to rehab the structure, and now they are underway in completing the rehabilitation of the building and returning it to a community use as a community center and technology place for young adults. The Rosenwald Initiative has also achieved a number of other uh, milestones since its beginnings. Besides the Lowe's contributions, we have established a number of funds, including the Alice Rosenwald Fund for the rehabilitation and planning of use of these buildings. In the last trust conference, we were indeed honored, and I was among the five people that were asked to receive an award for the initiative to save Rosenwald schools. Other people involved in the Rosenwald initiative also include direct descendants of Julius Rosenwald, Peter Askeley, who has authored a recent book about his famous grandfather, is among our group, as well as Alice Rosenwald, who has established her own planning fund that's geared towards the preservation of these endangered schools. The Lowe's Charitable and Educational Foundation has committed over $2 million to the rehabilitation of these buildings, and over 40 projects were funded, which otherwise may not have received this bricks and mortar money. Back home in Georgia, we have developed a multiple property nomination so that we can easily list all eligible Rosenwald schools. And this past year, uh, our most recent listing in the National Register of Historic Places is the Casita High and Industrial School, School in Chattahoochee County. Casita High and Industrial School was built in 1930, and it was built using the community school plans that were the hallmark of the Rosenwald Fund. It is a two-teacher type building, wood structure, and today its stewards are the Chattahoochee County Historical Society that now owns the building. They plan to return it to a community use, and we are indeed happy that it is our most recent listing as a result of the multiple property nomination that we did a couple of years ago. Besides looking for Rosenwall schools and equalization schools, we occasionally get lucky and find a building that we thought we had lost. Such is the case of the Griffin Vocational School, also that was known as the Fairmont High School. It is a six-teacher brick building that we found uh, actually joined to the hip with the equalization school in front of it. I don't know who was more excited about this discovery, me or the Griffin County, uh, the Griffin, excuse me, uh, the Griffin Bo uh, Recreational Department that now owns this building. They have plans to make it a community center and to rehabilitate many of the other equalization school buildings that surround it. This particular school was featured in a WSB TV special called Celebrating Our Heritage this past January. And in the video, we got to interview some of the alumni of Fairmont High School, as well as interview the stewards for the building, 
in Spalding County, Georgia. As Georgia and other southern states begin to commemorate the 150th sesquicentennial of the American Civil War, African American programs has also been involved in supporting a number of initiatives to commemorate this and to bring greater attention to the contributions of African Americans both during and after the Civil War. One such contribution we made was to uh, do a lecture in Savannah about a historic meeting that occurred at the end of the war at the Green Meldrum Mansion. This meeting resulted in 40 acres and a mule in that 20 ministers recommended to General Sherman that land be given to the freed people. He immediately a few days later issued Phil Order Number 15 which set aside lands for the people in Georgia and other coastal communities 30 miles inland and all of our barrier islands. It was soon rescinded in, in a few months but the historic meeting that occurred that many people know about as 40 acres and a mule shall not be forgotten in Georgia's history. We've also contributed articles to a website as well as a brochure that was developed by the Georgia Department of Economic Development and in our article we talk about the legacy of Horace King who was an enslaved African American that built bridges on both sides of the Chattahoochee River both before the Civil War and afterwards. Today we're indeed fortunate that one of his bridges still stands in Middle Georgia. We also are partnering with the Georgia Historical Society who is implementing a number of markers to commemorate untold facts about the Civil War when it was celebrated at its 100th anniversary. One such fact was that U.S. colored troops actually fought in Georgia at Fort Hill in, in the northern part of our state in Dalton. A marker has been erected to commemorate this event. And lastly, African American programs is very much involved in the preservation of Georgia's Gullah Geechee culture as well as the Gullah Geechee National Heritage Area that extends not only in Georgia but to North and South Carolina as well as Florida. Two such projects that we have been supporting are the uh, renovation of Tabby Cabins on Asaba Island and the interpretation of African American life both on the island and in the uh, community called Pinpoint where African Americans migrated to after the close of the Civil War. A second project that we support is the rehabilitation of a historic school called the, in St. Simons Island called the Harrington School. It is kind of the last community landmark building in St. Simons and we have been actively involved with the friends of the St. Simons Harrington School in trying to preserve this structure. Also, as part of my work with the National Trust, we, we encourage programs both in Georgia and elsewhere to get, take full advantage of the many grant opportunities available with the National Trust. One such initiative is called Partnership and Scholarship. And last year, Kennesaw State University and Oakland Cemetery here in Atlanta partnered to develop a cell phone tour of the African American portions of Oakland Cemetery. The project has been a great success and now visitors can come to the cemetery and simply dial up a number on their cell phones and learn about many of the African Americans that are buried at Oakland Cemetery in Atlanta. These are just a few examples of the activities that African American Programs is involved in. Let's keep in touch. Be sure to contact me at 404-656-4768 or visit me on our website at genie.syriac at dnr 
that state, that GA, that US. Thank you.